everyone. Welcome back to Nintendo Prime. And you know what? We have really five big stories for you today that I'm super excited to get into. But you know, before we dive into those, hey guys, why don't you drop a like and subscribe to the channel because we're on a road to 150,000 subscribers. But you know what? We got to first dive into some big stories here. We have some stuff dealing with Zelda. We have some stuff, well, really surrounding the Nintendo Switch in general because it happened to to pass a major milestone here in the United States. We have an update for Rayman fans out there. Oh, and so much more. So, what are we waiting for? Let's get into the news. <laughs> And our first story deals with Tears of the Kingdom, but not in the way that you might think. We could be talking about how Nintendo just dropped like top 12 pro tips for The Legend of Zelda Tears of the Kingdom, which is quite interesting. But then when you read the 12 tips, they're not what I would call pro tips. They're more like beginner tips. But whatever, it's Nintendo, that's probably about what I suspect from them. But no, that is not actually the big news today. The big news is actually that Tears of the Kingdom for the month of July, according to, well, the former MPD, it's now called Circana. Yeah, it's the fourth best-selling book in the month of July. You heard me right. Tears of the Kingdom, not best-selling game, best-selling book. What are we talking about? Well... The Tears of the Kingdom book popped up in the top 10, and when we say book, we're just talking strategy guy, but technically guides are a form of book, so it counts, and it popped up in the number four spot in the top 10, according to Circana for the month of July. It's sitting right behind an actual book called Too Late. So quite interesting to see this happen. It was a fun little note from our MPD extraordinaire, Matt Piscatella over on Twitter. And I'm just really, really excited, I suppose, to see Tears of the Kingdom chopping a chart that I don't know when the last video game guide actually got onto the chart. And the game didn't come out in July. So what this is suggesting, of course, is that people were having a hard time and they went and bought the book, or they just bought it for collector's purposes because July is when the collector's edition of the guide came out. Either way, it is what it is. Uh, Tears of the Kingdom guidebook is the best-selling or fourth best-selling book for the month of July here in the United States because of reasons. Next up, Mario plus Rabbid fans. Well, actually, you know what? This isn't about the Mario plus Rabbid fans. This is about you Rayman fans out there because apparently there's special something about Rayman if you happen to 100% the upcoming DLC for Mario plus Rabbids Sparks of Hope. Ooh, what are we talking about here? Well, let's just dive into this giant post from the director of the game. Hey everyone, I'm here with a message from David Solonali, which I had the honor to have a chat with. He gladly accepted to leave this message for the Rayman community, and this is the message. This comes from a member over on a Discord server. For all of us at Ubisoft Milan who worked on the DLC 3, it was a dream come true to be able to bring Rayman back into the Mario plus Rabbids universe because Rayman is the first game I made when I joined Ubisoft in 1999. There, I worked on Rayman for Game Boy Color, Rayman's movements, and at the time, the designers didn't only make the game structure and the rules, but also the levels. So I learned to make my first levels, exploit the limitations of the console and memory limitations, and for me, it was a dream to be able to bring back Rayman in the Phantom Show DLC. So I hope that the community and all Rayman players support us as much as possible, because I'm on a mission. My mission is to be able to bring Rayman back to the glory he deserves. Among other things, in the DLC, there is a hidden message that players who will 100% complete the DLC can read. So I hope for your support, and I hope that you like it. Oh boy, folks, does that not sound like a tease for a possible Rayman game announcement hidden in this deal, I don't know, maybe I'm just getting my hopes too high, but he did say, I want to bring Rayman back to the glory he deserves, which would sound like they maybe want this DLC to lead into the launch of a brand new Rayman game. I don't know, I'm throwing it out there. All right, look, Rayman's been a really fun series. We had an excellent Rayman game back in the early days of Wii U. It would be great to see Rayman come back again. It's been a long, long time, over a decade since our last true Rayman game. So. 
We'll see if this is going to end up being the tease. I hope it is. Or if it's just something else that's more of an Easter egg for old school Rayman fans. I guess time will tell. So next up we get to talk about the Famitsu most wanted list because uh, to, at least to me a surprise game is number one. You might think oh maybe it's Final Fantasy 7 Rebirth. Uh, maybe you know it's a pretty hype game. Maybe it would be Super Mario Wonder. You know a brand new Mario game launching in October. No. Rather it's this little obscure title Nintendo's launching for their holiday season. Super Mario RPG. That's right. The remastering, HD, and whatever the heck you want to call it of Super Mario RPG is the number one most wanted game from the Famitsu reader base with over 800 something votes or whatever. It's insane. Let's go over the entire top five to give you an idea of what it's up against. So we have Super Mario RPG at number one, Final Fantasy VII Rebirth at number two, Mario Wonder is coming in there at number three. The Dragon Quest Monsters Rebirth is at number four. And then we have Armored Core 6 rounding out that top five. And you can see the rest of the top 10 on screen. Look, honestly, I'm a little bit surprised it's Super Mario RPG that's getting pretty much all the pub this time around. But you know, it is interesting that Nintendo did position that as their big holiday title instead of Mario Wonder, even though I can argue Super Mario Wonder might sell more and might be the bigger overall deal. But I don't know what it is about October. That's around the time they also launched Super Mario Odyssey. For some reason, they like launching Mario S games in October, whether it was Luigi's Mansion 3, obviously Mario Odyssey, now Mario Wonder. They're loving that October slot for brand new Mario games so hey whatever if you're excited for super mario rpg i know i am because ah, man i never played the original i know what's wrong with me so i did play thousand year door that's the crazy thing i played the, the paper mario rpg but i didn't i didn't play this one what look there's a gap it's a little gap in my childhood of, of play all right like well, we're gonna we're gonna take care of that this november Next up, we have some interesting news, also sort of coming out of Circana, aka MPD. I gotta get used to using that new name, but I want you guys to have a frame of reference for what I'm talking about. And that is updated sales figures for Nintendo Switch. Now, we already talked last week about the MPD slash Circana stuff, so we don't need to rehash all the numbers, but what we do know now, thanks to deep dives through it, is that, yeah, GameIndustry.biz is now reporting that Nintendo Switch has surpassed the Nintendo Wii in terms of being one of the best-selling home consoles in the United States. Here's what they had to say about it. Switch has continued to perform strong in 2023, helped by the release of The Legend of Zelda Tears of the Kingdom. In fact, in the United States, lifetime sales of Switch hardware finally surpassed those of Nintendo Wii in the U.S. market during July 2023. Switch lifetime sales now trail Xbox 360 by less than 1 million units and PlayStation 2 by fewer than 5 million units. That means in the United States, the Nintendo Switch has an opportunity to become the number two best-selling system of all time and a slim, but not outside of realm of reality chance to end up surpassing the PlayStation 2 to become the best-selling platform in United States history. Dedicated gaming platform, I suppose, is how we should frame that. To me, that's absolutely insane, and I'm very, very, very happy to see that this is a thing Nintendo is accomplishing this time around, especially after the pitfalls of Wii U and even 3DS on the 3DS to a much lesser degree. I don't know. I'm just really excited that this is where Nintendo Switch is sitting. I know I'm ready for the next hardware, but it is fun looking back on the success of today's current Nintendo platform. Last but not least, we need to talk about Sega and Atlas, who are putting on an amazing presentation at Tokyo Game Show on the 21st. And of course, we can look forward to games like, I don't know, Sonic Superstars and Persona 5 Tactica, but we're probably gonna see some other stuff as well, and I wanna talk about those games briefly. So first off, the show is happening at 7 p.m. Japan time, and no, we're not gonna be live streaming, reacting to this, but we will bring the news to you as fast as we can. But the other games that we possibly could see are things like Persona 3 Reload, which isn't due until next year. I know a lot of you guys are excited for that one. Like a Dragon Gaiden, and you know what? Maybe the most exciting game for me personally, Total War Pharaoh. You want to know how important the Total War franchise is to me and how big of a fan I am of this mostly PC-only IP? Well, you see, back in the day, about 
2006, 2007, I ran a little known video game website that delivered news on everything, PlayStation, Xbox, Nintendo, PC. It crossed the whole gambit. First time I ever did that. And that website was called Shogun Total Gaming. Now, if you don't know the history of the Total War series, let me refresh your memory or at least inform your brain cells. The very first Total War game was called Shogun Total War. So yeah, clear inspirations for the titling of that website. And I ran Shogun Total Gaming for about three years. So yeah, I'm really, I, I love this IP and I love the Egyptian period of the pharaohs. So to me, I, I'm just, I'm super stoked for this game and probably going to put some serious hours into it this holiday. Whether or not we get to talk about it on anything but briefly on the Nintendo Prime Podcast. Anyways, guys, thank you so much for being here. I'm so excited to have this news format brought to you. Look forward tomorrow to a few changes to the format. Uh, mostly a slightly different camera angle just to improve on some things. And actually releasing on time. For those who don't know, this is essentially being, bringing an old news segment back called Prime News. And the idea is I want to deliver these by 3 p.m. Central Time. This one, unfortunately, isn't being delivered by 3 p.m. Central Time because it's almost 3 p.m. Central Time at the time of recording. That being said, late start today. It was bill paying day. It was grocery shopping day. Had other priorities. We'll be back though. I want to let you guys know we do have a new posting schedule. I've been talking about it here and there, but I just want to remind you guys if you made it to the end of this video. Now, Monday through Friday, we will try to post a video at 10 a.m. and always get our news video up around 3 p.m. Again, the idea is to get it up by 3, but you know, things didn't happen that way today. I'll catch you guys in the next video. <music>